I still would have got it. I just wouldn't felt lied to. You wouldn't. You wouldn't feel cheated now. No. You wouldn't feel cheated on the other side of the thing. No, because orange soda is orange soda is orange soda. Yeah. Two guys, one podcast. I am the lowest common denominator. What do you want? I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. The Sodom and Gomorrah yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. I just turned it sideways, me time stand still. Do you picture J.R. Ewing while you're having sex? I don't do anything but talk. Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. <laughs> is that true? I'm not an orange soda guy. I went through a phase when I was in elementary school. Do you say elementary or elementary? <laughs> uh, if I'm talking about the school, I say elementary. But if um, I'm talking about, like, you know, Dr. Watson and Sherlock Holmes. Elementary. I always say. Elementary. Don't. Yes. Um, in elementary school, uh, when I was in grade school, I went through a phase, like, one year that I really liked Sunkissed. But I was very, I was, I've always been a name brand guy. You know this about me, though, right? Like, I don't. Sometimes my name brand is a is a particular generic that I like, but like when I pick a brand that I like, that's the only brand of the thing that I like. That is very true. Like I don't like I, I don't like bread. I like you know honey wheat, nature's own bread. Yes. What did we start talking about? <laughs> What do we start talking? Oh, 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 we were talking about the fact that you got the wrong orange drink. <laughs> yes, it was mislabeled in the in the vending machine. Here. I'm still going to drink it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't think that was in doubt. How great would it be? Because this is what this is one of the old school Coke machines where you open the small door and turn the little turn flap. That's the technical term for turn it, fl- I think. turn it, flap. It's the turn <laughs> flap. Yeah. It's a boondoggle in there somewhere. <laughs> I really wish I just would have went to some random one. Got this one out. So pissed off it wasn't the brand of orange soda that I wanted. I go, take a Coke or Diet Coke, probably Diet Coke, because I'd really fuck with a Diet Coke person. Turn it to the Diet Coke comes out. Keep it turned. Slide the Diet Coke out and put the orange soda in its place and turn it back. Yes, I did just buy two drinks and only get one, but I, I got more enjoyment out of fucking with the Diet Coke guy than the cost of the soda. Or the enjoyment you'd get out of drinking your off-brand orange drink. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I obviously enjoy the orange soda more than generic orange than soda. That. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. <laughs> you said you were going to do it. <laughs> pulled the Clint Eastwood. <laughs> we, and we've got an empty chair. You pulled a Clint Eastwood and we've got an empty chair. Bam. That's excellent. We're topical. Not political, though. We're not going to get into that shit here. I spend no. all day on Facebook talking about politics. <laughs> I do not. I, I do. That's all mine has become. I, well, here's what happens. I sit there and I say nothing for a while, and I'm trying to be a live and let live kind of guy. Because who gives a shit about my opinion anyway, right? If they do, they're listening to this podcast, and they don't, like, they don't care about my opinion on politics. They want my opinion on whether or not Batman was method or not, you know? I, or, I, or, or what <laughs> what we think about Sherman Helmsley's death. Ooh, too soon. No, <laughs> it's a long time ago. We've <laughs> talked about it. So we've already killed another black man since then. We have. Oh, my God, dude. Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah. Yeah. We killed another actor. We did. I mean, we didn't do it. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. We didn't. Nobody shot him or anything. We weren't responsible for his heart attack. It's that podcast mojo. Mm. Yeah, but we did... We did mention him last week. I yeah. said that he was carrying you around. You you talked about assisted running, and in my head, I was Michael Clark Duncan was carrying you around <laughs> like, on, on his back. Orderly? No, like you were like he was Luke Skywalker and you were Yoda, and you were jogging through the swamps of Dagobah, and you're like, you know, it's assisted running, Michael. Clark <laughs> yeah, <Duncan. that's> a- <laughs> oddly enough, I got a, I received a text message from a listener, and it said, "I just finished listening about your assisted running, and it inspired me." I dusted off the old treadmill today. I'm changing lives, baby. That's awesome, dude. That's I'm changing a, well, lives. Good for you, man. Good. And you know what? Rightfully so. I I did think that my... I haven't gotten on the scales in a few days, but I can tell 
the way my underwear fits. I put on I put on I put on five or ten pounds I, I, probably. Orange soda almost <laughs> sprayed yeah. the walls. I, I I've put on I put on probably five or ten pounds since like So uh, how much do you weigh? Like mm, glass I need new underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need new underwear. If they're getting too saying, tight, you do. No, they're not too tight. They're tighter than they were last let's say are spring. They, are they more last comfortable? Christmas. I, they're, I mean, they're not uncomfortable. I'm not. They're not leaving track marks or anything. All right. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm fine in the comfort of my underwear. I'm just saying, I have put on some weight. I could tell. So, I mean, I'm not going to start running or anything. <laughs> but yeah, well, you know, I might I, think here, about something, I, some sort of activity. And and as I've been, you know, running again, I made a uh, like I just had an epiphany, man. Uh it's it is way harder to run in the south than anywhere else not because of the heat okay not because of the humidity all right you work out more running in the south than anywhere else because every fucking car that passes you wave <laughs> every single one you're running they see you running they give you the wave they give you a nod you wave you nod it's the polite thing to do but come on, man! I'm working out. There's I don't need of, extra activity. Right. I don't need to acknowledge your passing. No, not at all. In fact, I, I, I kind of don't because I'm still I'm I'm a husky dude. And I'm like, man, I don't want you like you waving and nodding, let you know you see my fat ass struggling down the street. I, I prefer not to know that you're seeing me. this. That's right. Let's let's treat this like it didn't happen. All right. Um, but yeah, it's hard. It's harder, man. Well, I mean, you're a well off dude. Why aren't you running in a gym? Why don't you have a gym membership? I don't like to work out in front of Mrs. Other Guy and I actually had this conversation a couple of days ago. She likes to work out in the gym. Yeah. Well, I think it's a communal. For me, it would be advantageous to have other people to have the experience with. Well, well, she's super competitive, but she's also in really good shape. Yeah, she is. So she can stay on whatever treadmill, bike, whatever. That her friend is also doing. That her friend is also doing and can stay on it as long or longer than than people around them. What you're saying is she's a normie and you're not a normie anymore. <laughs> I'm just saying I go and get on treadmill. I'm there like three minutes and I'm off, and everybody's like, "What the fuck is what is what is he doing?" Um, so what we need then? What, see, I, I I see a business opportunity. What we need is like think curves, but for fat dudes. Fat middle aged dudes. That's what we need, we, man. We need like individual, like stalls. Maybe you got stalls like, or treadmills. Like, or just, 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 not, not just, yeah, you have stalls over treadmill and stuff, but like to get a membership, it's by it's by height and weight you have to, ratio. No, you have to have a certain percent body, body fat, fat. A certain percent <laughs> body fat. Perfect. Or you can't. No, no, sir. I'm sorry. There are plenty of other uh, normal gyms yeah. in town. You can go to that's those a, gyms. Oh, man. That's such a good idea. I tell you, man. I think, I think it's a population that's underserved. There's a lot of guys. Well, let's be honest. You and I, it, did you go to your 10-year reunion? I went to my 10-year reunion, and here's what I saw. I saw... Well, I'd say eighty percent of the of the people in my class had put on fifty pounds or so since senior year, and they hadn't gotten any taller. I'm an eighty percenter. There you go. And and so what I'm saying is, I think there's a lot of guys in their thirties and forties that used to be like you, very athletic, in great shape, and they're too damn ashamed to get back in the gym. That, seriously, that's a job opportunity right there. I think that's a, a serious investment waiting to happen. And be, like, hey, like you could keep the machine in that shit. Don't you people create one and then cut us out of it? <laughs> Patent bending. <laughs> that's right. Uh, <laughs> the, the, chubbies, chubbies. That's what we'll call. Oh them. yes. Here's the best thing. Here's the best thing about chubbies. All right. Uh, oh, the stalls have a whole new meaning if that's its name. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe pole not. dancing is an athletic event. <laughs> nice. What do they do in the stalls? Oh, they just jerk off till they lose weight. <laughs> that's right. Uh, we Room seven's been a, in there for we could, days. We could put them on a treadmill with the with the video screen only works when you're walking or whatever, and the and it's playing porn. There you go, man. Like you got to walk, you got to keep up the motion to uh, to to keep your uh, no your groove th- going. Uh, see, you you're more of the uh, the honey guy. Like you know, honey catches more more flies right. than vinegar. Yeah, I'm I'm the vinegar guy, man. If you come in at Chubby's, I don't want porn and people jerking off in stalls. All right. I mean, I'll not agree. that there's anything wrong with that. I'll agree that's probably not the best thing to have in a gym anyway. But if you're going to do something like that, don't reward them. 
with being able to you know watch porn and jerk off while they while they work out right tie like a fucking like string to their nutsack and attach it to the wall so they got to keep moving at a certain pace yeah if they don't they'll be uh um artificially castrated like you will really have to rethink at how many minutes you put that thing <laughs> on you know, what, you know what i'm saying like uh do, would you like a 60 minute workout no, no. thanks Three. <laughs> I'll do three and see how I feel. And then get back on for another three. I'll do three more and see how I feel. I think I got two in me this in time, the- trainer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's fun uh, stuff. All right, man. There we go. We need to draw up some. We're going to have to write up some papers before we can discuss but, chubbies any further. But really, guys like me who would go that, there's a reason we're in the shape that we are. It's because we don't fucking go to gyms. So uh, you'd really just need one stall. <laughs> Cheap. You say you say we wouldn't we, we wouldn't need a lot of floor space. Yeah, no, don't waste it. <laughs> you could just sell a ton of gym memberships, and it makes the name like super ironic. <laughs> right there, you go. I like it. Well, hey, you know what? It would be hard to retain them if they if they worked out too much. They'd keep dropping yeah, yeah, off yeah. the body fat uh, percentage. Well, we just That's also put idea. like a McDonald's in it. You know, like uh, like these gas stations have like you know a Wendy's or Arby's oh, on fuck it. Yeah, like we, we we put a McDonald's attached to it. So as soon as they come in. Man, fuck! I'd give me some French fries. Well, I'll have a, uh, I'll have the parfait, and yeah. uh, and a Big Mac. Uh, give me three minutes on the nut machine. <laughs> <laughs> we started this conversation talking about Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah. God rest his soul, man. Fifty four years old. I, did you read the news that came out today? Uh, it turns out this it, it's we've esta- we've established this. You don't read the news. No, but I knew he died because I read a whole lot of headlines. Yeah, what happened apparently was he he had a heart attack uh, back in July, and uh, it took like five minutes for him to be resuscitated. His fiance Omarosa, who's isn't she a reality star or something? Sure, she was on. I think she was on The Apprentice. Maybe anyway, she resuscitated him, but it took five minutes before she could get his heart started and he started breathing again or whatever. Um. It was too long. He suffered a lot of damage to his organs because of that, and so like slowly. So she's so she's kind of she's she's kind of continued her trend of shitty jobs. Yeah. You mean you mean failing at yeah, like she just the she, great Michael. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean she did. She could have got life. him back in three, but she did a shitty job. Yeah. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Yeah. Um. She did. She did save his life, but it. But he ended up kind of wasting away over the last several weeks um it, it finally died she didn't save his life she just prolonged his death really yeah finally died though like two days after we post the podcast where we mention him it's a little eerie i don't mind saying it so yeah that's yeah it's it is it is kind of creepy uh kind of makes me want to stop talking about famous people famous or at people. least famous black people are famous people that like. i was seeing that was so weird i wanted to talk about Eddie Murphy's new show, he's going to be back on TV this, like, not this fall, but next year. CBS is going to do a sequel series to Beverly Hills Cop. And now, like, I'm terrified. <laughs> That's all <laughs> Eddie, we're going to say about Eddie, it. Eddie, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'm like, we're just going to keep that. He's kind of Bernie Mac. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not going to give him any press about that upcoming show. <laughs> um, uh, we're just going to leave that alone. <laughs> don't die on us, Eddie. You got more kids. See, I immediately, thought, I immediately thought, all right, I'm not talking about Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> He's like one pudding cup away yeah, from, the, yeah. from the grave anyway. Yeah, I'm like I'm oh. not can't can't talk about this guy. Oh my god. Well anyway, I so Michael Clark what's your favorite movie with him? Um You mentioned trying to think of a quote from the Green Mile. All I can really remember from the Green Mile is is Tom Hanks pissing. That's I was gonna say the same thing. That's all I can remember too. It's the most That's it. It's him the, having the the bladder infection yes. or the kidney stone or whatever and him. <laughs> Having the urinary tract infection and trying to piss the whole movie. It's the it's the most it's the most enduring uh, vision. Like th- it happens so often. Do you know you know that who else I was impressed with by their by their by their pissing? pissing? Yes, who? Swearinger, uh, Ian McShane. Oh my God! Yeah. Well, he only he does that for a couple episodes, yeah. right? There's like two or three episodes yeah. in a row where it's an issue, and then the third where it finally comes to a head and he passes yeah. the stone. Literally. Yeah, that is. I I gotta tell you. A good actor can really raise a urinary <laughs> issue to a height. Yeah, Tom Hanks and Ian Machine, best pissers I've ever seen. <laughs> um, I wonder if Tom Hanks has ever actually gone through that. Like, is that something that he pulled from real experience, or or did he did he have to do some research? 
He just had a lot of sex with a lot of dirty girls. <laughs> His wife's like, what are you doing? He He's said, like, method. I got to get VD. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's got to burn when I piss. Yeah. Um, I loved him. I first He first popped onto my radar in Armageddon. His his role in Armageddon was awesome. Do you remember him? He dances I, he, on the table in his underwear, uh, and he cries at one point in one of the interviews as they're pre- prepping the mining team. Yeah, I thought he was just the big black guy in the movie. Yeah, he's the heavy, but he's he's got like three funny beats all in a row there, uh, in particularly in in the testing phase when NASA is evaluating all of the mining team. Uh, he in particular, like there's what they start asking him questions, and all of a sudden it cuts to him, and he's and he's just in tears talking about his mother or something like that, and that I just would roll. Although Armageddon's one of my favorite movies, so uh, I'm kind of a homer for it. Anyway. A really, really great actor, and obviously born to play the role of John Coffey. He was perfect for that. Although you told me you've never read those, you've never read the book. No, I've never read a single Stephen King book. See, here's what: Have you read any John Grisham books? Uh, no, nor have I read Dean Koontz. Okay, you talk. Those are the three most prolific writers of our generation. I disagree. You read every single day. And you've never read any one of them? What, who who do you think is more prolific than those three guys? Uh, William W. Johnstone. What does he write? Mm, thought you were a reader. I'm not. So really, when it comes to Westerns, there's really only two authors. Okay. There's Louis L'Amour. And William W. Johnstone. And he's still writing? Hey, I don't know if it's him or his son still writing, but he also writes horror, sto- horror mm-hmm. uh, novels, too. Uh, and he's put out... Like like it's a book or two a year or something. No, like it's like two books a week. Really? No, I mean it's quick. It's it's like, no, it's not. But but I mean they're cranking them out like yeah yeah. He's got a formula and they're just right into that formula. Yeah, they're not. I mean they're not very big, right? You know, they're uh, what we used to call dime store novels. Yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. Like the uh, there was a it was a western series that I got a couple of copies from like my grandmother's house one time like the rifle it wasn't the rifleman but it was something like that it was named for the character mm-hmm. and they were all exactly the same like he rides into town meets a beautiful woman in distress <laughs> you know it's a good gig man there's a there's a bad guy who owns some oil rigs near the town or something like that or maybe this time it's gold you know or maybe there's pirates here or whatever but the rifleman always comes away the winner but he's got to say goodbye to the woman and there's like Bye, like it was Kitty. like it was like bodice ripping image on the cover, you know, like she's busting out of her bustle, and he's in all black. Yeah, and in the background, there's a stagecoach going by. Yeah, 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 exactly. And there's like two sex scenes in every book, just enough, not so that the housewives, uh, you know, blush at it exactly, but it's enough to keep them coming back to. Uh, I read a couple of those when I was when I was a young man. I, I bet that is a good... Why aren't we writing those? Like, seriously, why are you reading a book a day? Why aren't you writing a motherfucking book a day? Get rich, bitch! Dude, since the last time we t- what, we talked... Last time we talked about a book was in... Episode it was a th- long time. Episode two, three, four? Maybe fourth the most. With any, with any like, specificity. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we yeah. mentioned a couple of books since then. We mentioned Red Shirts. Yeah, since then I've read... I think I've gone through seven. That's crazy, man. That's yeah. crazy. I say crazy. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing that you read that much. I wish I did. I should. I can't. I just can't get, like, I feel like there's too much current information for me to cram into my head. I don't have time. I don't have enough time for fiction. I'm, I am I find small snippets of time to read almost every day. Yeah. I mean, I poop a lot, man. <laughs> um Michael Clark Duncan was perfect for John Coffey. You should check out that book. I, if you read any... Well, I don't know. If you're only going to read one Stephen King book, that would probably not be the one that I would suggest to read. It was a great story, I thought. And he was perfect for that character. Absolutely perfect. So, for that and for everything else, uh, Michael Clark Duncan will be missed. I'm going to, uh, because you seem to, you seem to like the guy. I I like him a lot. I loved his kingpin. Can you name five Michael Clark Duncan movies? I can't. I can't. I already, okay. Daredevil. Yep. Armageddon. See, I wouldn't even remember Armageddon. I would have got Daredevil. But okay. he's in Armageddon. Yeah. Uh, he was, uh, uh, we've already talked about another one, though. The Green Mile. Uh, yeah, The Green Mile. So that's three. Uh, he was also in uh, Green Lantern, uh, the, the the recent one. He did a voice in Green Lantern. And he was in uh, Scorpion King with The Rock. 
I'll trust you. Uh, well, he was. I think he was maybe even in two of the Mummy movies, like, or the Scorpion King movies. I'm not sure which one, but I, I'm, I know he was in at least one. I'm pretty sure he was in two. Anyway, here's what he wanted to do, and I read a bunch of interviews where he talked about this, and I'm kind of sad that he never got to play exactly this role. He wanted to be the romantic lead in a straight-up romantic comedy where it didn't really matter that he was gigantic, where that wasn't a part of the plot, you know? I wanted to see I wanted to see them make make a John Henry movie and he played John Henry. Oh god, he would have been the perfect John Henry. I he he would have been he would have been good at so many things in the comic book world in particular. There's so many different roles he could have taken on. I thought he would have made a great I, we're probably about to see Thanos for instance in the uh, Marvel universe. I th- I thought he would have made a great Thanos for instance. Um, I mean, Dark Seed in the or Dark Side, however you say it, in the DC world, if he ever comes up in the in a Superman movie, he would have made a nice one of those. I, there's a ton of places he could have been used. He will be missed, is my point. He's a great big guy, and everybody that knew him in Hollywood, if you read any of the obituaries and and any of the things that were written about him, just profusive love. Apparently, the dude had a heart even bigger than he was. Just sad it gave out on him. It's a bummer, man. Now. Time for a little listener mail. Jamail! Jamail is here! Ooh! Eaglet Joe <laughs> wrote in to stand up for herself. For what? We didn't say anything bad about her. Uh, you know, we, we discussed uh, the other day that my uh, first roommate in Arizona, the name, her uh, her code name. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, Annoys her. Uh, she says, I'm sorry to have, have, have offended your Arizona roommate. Begin sarcastic tone here. If she... Or the other guy cannot accept the bonding ritual of my family. Well, lucky for them, they don't have to be in said family. If this helps, seeing that I've graduated... I haven't heard from, anything bad yet. <laughs> seeing that I've graduated from said college uh, that began the nickname, technically I am now Eagle Joe. See, Eagle Joe definitely sounds like a boy to me. And she is most assuredly a girl. Secondly, I don't even know how the name Eagle Joe showed up on the email. So, find a hill and get over it. Ha ha ha. That... From the newly rechristened Eagle Joe. I think we started a turf war. <laughs> it's a cat fight, brother. It's a cat fight waiting to happen. Um, he of many names chimes in as well. <laughs> He's let's, always got an let's answer. See, let's see how we're going to be enlightened today. You and I discussed the other day, uh, or on last episode, about um, the incorrect grammar in your entry to the show. Oh, with the and? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You put the extra and in there after the comma. Um, he says uh, the word is ascendant, A-S-Y-N-D-E-T-O-N. Can I guess what that means? Yes. Does that mean taking artistic liberties with grammar? No. Damn it. It's, but it sounds like, oh, man, I thought I had. <laughs> no. You're, you're way off. I was way off, the but man, I thought, I thought I was going to be genius. Um, when you omit, that is when you omit the conjunction between the conjuncts. Here's an example. And that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Abraham Lincoln, Gettysburg Address, uh, of course. I feel like conjuncts all live at conjunction junction. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> so uh, conjuncts are the things being yeah, conjuncted. I yeah, I got you. Okay. So that that is called ascendant, and I think I'm pronouncing it wrong, but I'm going to have these. I'm yeah, have I'm, these I'm, I'm almost sure ascendant is not a word. No, ascendant. I'm As- sorry, ascendant. 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 Shush. <laughs> I'll have it all linked on our website, twoguysonepod.com. Twoguysonepod.com. Okay, so that's one way. That's the way that I wrote it. That's the way that our little headliner on our facebook page facebook.com slash two guys one pod that's the way that it's written your way is called polysendenton both descendant yes that is the use of several conjunctions between conjuncts and here's an example of that and every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven and they were destroyed from the earth and noah only remained alive and they that were with him in the ark that's sounds from like genesis he, oh man i had a joke wait a oh, fuck I'm sorry. it sorry sounds like what no <laughs> it's gone now oh it's not the joke's not worth cutting for all right then fine 
I was just going to say, I, I was just going to say, sounds like he reads a lot of Stephen King. <laughs> it does sound like that. <laughs> if you read the Old Testament, some of it sounds a little Stephen Kingy. Or I guess, you know, the, technically, the Stephen Kingy sounds a little Old Testament at times. Apparently, my way is biblical. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's a little classical, perhaps. It's a little emphatic. Anyway, his point is, and this is his, his direction to you. I'm getting, I'm getting directions from a listener. You are. He says, if any grammar Nazis get on you for using more than one and, just tell them you're incorporating polysendenton as in stylistic choice. Then tell them to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Comma, and fuck off. Yes. Also, <laughs> he says, very quickly, you don't win 50 times in a row at Settlers of Catan on luck alone. If you were playing Candyland, then that would have a statistical anomaly because Candyland requires no choices. You, sir, are uh, are either rigging the game or, in fact, you're just way the fuck better than us. That's that's what he of many names. How long? Uh, how how long of a winning streak did I have? the The longest I think you've ever gone without it uh, without our mutual friend winning, right? Around thirty. I'd say maybe maybe twenty eight, twenty nine, maybe you got to thirty six or thirty seven, somewhere in that neighborhood. I, I don't think like you ever 20, won. I was thinking like twenty three or something. Yeah, I don't think you ever won forty in a row. I think you got pretty close to thirty, though, yeah. without a single win from anybody else. That's and again, either the dice are loaded, or you're just significantly better. Uh, actually, you have a, ch- a challenge has been laid down to you, by the way. Who your niece? I uh, mean, yeah, I've been yeah, my niece, my fourteen year old niece. I've been teaching her how to play. Oh Christ. Whenever you get good enough, you know, I'll invite, I'll invite one guy and our mutual friend over, and you can play him. I would love to see you beat him. Like, that would just be awesome if you did that. And she's like, well, I'll get him over here tomorrow. <laughs> nice. Here's, uh, here's what our mutual friend had to say when he heard our discussion of Catan on last week's podcast. Catan is a game that rewards directed aggressiveness, punishes fence-sitting, and is stingy with the steak knives. Other guy knows his ABCs. That's why he wins so much. There you go. We got one more email. And this is the surprise. We got email. I told you. I, t- I told you that we got those people. And then I said, this, we got a new one from somebody who's never written in before. It's a yeah. surprise. You said you don't like surprises. You're not going to like this one. <sighs> I think you are. Maybe. It's from Captain Noncommittal. Oh, no way. Are you kidding me? That's why I didn't tell you ahead of time. Oh, goodness. I, oh, I, I, wanted to ha- get- I wonder if he hates me. No. Not at all, dude. That's I. This is was such an uplifting email today. This is awesome. It made my afternoon, and I, I wanted to text you so bad, and I said, no, we're going to be in the studio in a little while. We'll just wait for it. I, li- I literally lifted myself out of the chair, uh, and I like that it's Captain Noncom. I, I, I do like the double constant alliteration. I was going to say, you. Yeah. Uh, uh, she wrote him in as Lord Noncommittal. You changed it to Our, Captain, so I kept it that way. Yeah. He doesn't use either title. And perhaps he <laughs> another surprise, one. surprise. Yeah. He used his real name, but that's what we're going to call you. Captain Noncommittal here. He says, hey, guys, I'm Captain Noncommittal. You may also know me as the problem guy for She Who Shan't Be Named. She told me about emailing the show, and I had no idea what she was talking about. She ratted us out, man. Yes. Um, she made me listen, and I think that you guys are fucking funny. She prepped me about sending in the question about uh, what we were. So apparently she started him on the podcast, and he and had not really made the connection. Like, she mentioned, hey, I wrote this thing about whatever, and he was like, I don't know what you're fucking talking about. And it's, you know, sometimes girls talk and we don't listen. <laughs> I know, ladies, don't, don't take it harshly. Sometimes our minds are busy on other things. I am not lumped into the we. <laughs> All right, whatever. Uh, me and Ca- Lord Noncommittal, <laughs> <or> Captain Noncommittal. <laughs> anyway... He some somewhere hadn't fired for him, so he's into it, and and she's like, hey, hey, hey coming up, you're gonna we're gonna be talked about on this show, just so you know. And he's like, oh, okay, okay, whatever. She was he was expecting uh, that we would just rip her apart about it. That didn't happen. I'm very thankful for that. I did want to tell you both that I've given uh, her and our relationship a lot of thought. And she and I have decided to give us a real solid shot. I was a jackass and knew she was wonderful, just needed to get my head out of my ass and let it happen. There's a happy ending for you and your advice. Uh, too soon, man. Uh, really? Let it breathe. You just opened the bottle. What are you 
you talking about? I'm I'm just saying all this has happened within a month. <laughs> right? Uh has it been I was thinking it's been more than that since we got the if it is, response if, email from her. If it is, it's not it's not off by much. It's like let's yeah, six weeks maybe. I feel like we jinxed it, man. What are you talking about? I, that we were the spur for them to do something? I worry about it. No, I worry about everything, and I feel like in another month we're going to get <laughs> oh. an email from both of them telling us to keep our shitty survive, shitty advice. <laughs> They're no longer together. Possibly. Please continue to download. <laughs> yeah, if Even you're, if we ruin your relationships. You don't have to listen. Just download. Uh, no, if you if you do ruin the relationships, uh, you know, let us know. <laughs> Hey, maybe we can hook him up with somebody else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anybody want to move to Arizona? They don't live in Arizona. I know. That's why I said move to. Don't you have an old roommate in Arizona? Oh, I do have an old roommate in Arizona. R L A. R L A. I do have who has having trouble dating in L A. We do have a we do have a sweetheart from the south in L A. There yeah. we and we've got a lot of listeners in Los Angeles too, fellas. If you're listening to this show, you're obviously a man of style and taste, not to be confused with Satan from Mick Jagger's uh, Sympathy for the Devil. Um, but you should hook up with our uh, with our friend. I mean, I'm not, we're not pimping her out, are we? Are we pimping her out? All of a sudden, I feel like we might be pimping her I cannot out. vouch for her looks because I've never seen her. She's a sweetheart, though. She's she's a pretty girl. I think, <laughs> I think that says it all. <laughs> um. She's, he's got a question for us too. Ooh, because this is a dear, dear other guy. Oh, all right. Girl. Let me get in the. Uh, let me get in. Uh, oh, get in the proper headspace. Yeah. Do you have a like a chant, some sort of a um? No, I just gotta shake. I just gotta shake it out. My guy, kind of thing. No. Okay. Yeah, I'm like the. I'm, I feel like Karnak right now. <laughs> I was gonna say you're gonna give me uh, the Beatles, <laughs> yeah, uh, Hoover, and your mother. <laughs> <laughs> nice things that suck. <laughs> hey. He asked, do you have any ideas on something nice to do for her? I feel like I should do something uh, nice but not too mushy just to show her how much I really do appreciate her in my life. Are flowers cheesy? Do guys – I know guys I, don't send them like they used to. I buy flowers for my wife all the time. Yeah, like on the regular. I'm sorry, on the reg. On the reg. Yeah, no, like there's there's flowers sitting in our kitchen right now that I that I got for her. I don't, I don't buy anything. I don't buy anything – ever i do i write poems sometimes i've been known to do that in the past uh i do cards i once passed off a mxpx song as an original poem <laughs> to a girl <laughs> nice and it worked nice I don't, there's lots of sweet things to do he's looking for something you think i mean flowers is definitely a way to go i'll say this though not every chick digs flowers like flowers are very impermanent you know, yeah. they're very fleeting and and some chicks would rather have the money spent on a tangible thing. Well, I would say don't go don't go the flower route or anything like that. Uh I don't even think that you have to spend money. Just just make it something personal between the two of you. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> listen and catch one of the things that she mentions that she doesn't think you caught. And or, then and then bring that back up for her. that's the gift, dude. I've done that. I've done that two or three times. Surprised Honey Bun with a thing that she mentioned in passing that she assumed that I had forgotten or overlooked or just didn't hear. And boy, man, like I whatever it was only mattered a little bit. But the fact that I caught it when she didn't think I did, or put it away and never mentioned it, but then just did something about it, that shit makes her day. Yeah, it's, that's what I'm saying. It, doesn't, it, it it never has to be anything big. I always like to do something that my wife knows I don't like doing. So, for example, she, she likes going to the park and taking the dogs to the park. Right. I fucking hate going to the park and taking dogs to the park. She knows I hate going to the park and taking dogs to the park. So you want to do something nice for her, you bring it up. You're like, hey, why exactly. don't we take the dogs to the park? Exactly. And sometimes I downplay something that I do like to do. Just to have it in the old back pocket, you know, whenever I want, it doesn't really bother me. Look, but she thinks I'm making a sacrifice to do the thing I don't like to do to make her happy. Right. But really, I like doing it. That's that's sneaky bullshit husband stuff, but that's the good kind of sneaky bullshit husband stuff. That's the shit that, that good husbands know and use to their own and their wives' advantage. There's nothing wrong 
with acting a little less enthused about an activity. Look, I'm not gonna, so that it looks so that it feels good for your wife when you do it. So the comment is made through relationships a lot, and especially marriages. Oh, you you got one young, so you can train them, or or you know, did she have you trained yet? I'm not going to say I haven't been trained. There's some things that I've, the habits I've I've changed because of her, but I've also learned. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I think that would be true for her too, though. I think she's learned. Oh, you think she's trained. being sneaky back at me? Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. Oh yeah. No. She knows. Yes, she knows how. She knows certain ways to manipulate you, and and some of I them. I can't. I can't be manipulated. That's not true at all. I, you can be point pointed and prodded in in a certain direction. No, I wanted to go that way. I make them think that they're pointing and prodding me into the direction that I want to go. Oh, you're saying you're saying you, you fucking maneuvered us into believing that we're maneuvering you. Yes. <laughs> nice all right so there you go listen and do one of the things that she asks about or thinks about or mentions that you that she doesn't think that you're going to ever do yeah do something or do something that you hate doing knowing that she's going to appreciate that sacrifice you're making for just her because you wouldn't do it for anybody else that's right he wraps up he says thanks for helping us both out the show's great thank you sir review it in itunes jackass um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe he has how do you know he hasn't i, sp- I suppose that's possible uh feel free to use he says feel free to use this however you can i <laughs> already did um thanks for the laughs wah, wah, wah. he closes formerly a jackass but trying to reform and then he signs his name uh that's captain non-committal i should say captain almost committal formerly <laughs> formerly known the captain the captain formerly, formerly known, known as non-committal <laughs> There you go. The captain formerly known as noncommittal. Oh, God, that's fun. Uh, keep that do you think, story up. Do you think after they listen to this and they're in the bedroom, he's going to be like, call me captain now? Because <laughs> I think he will. Like, that's, and if not, that's in my head what's going to happen after this. Like, he does whatever the good thing is after that nice thing. Like, they're having like passionate lovemaking. And he's just like, call me captain. Can I tell you, can I tell you something that may or may not get cut out of the show? Sure. Okay. Honey Bun and I are um, laying on my bed the other day, listening to an early episode of the podcast, like one of the like the final cuts of the podcast before we posted it. I like that you put such an emphasis on the word on as if there were another place to lay on the bed. Well, like we were laying end. on the bed. <laughs> well, as opposed to in the bed. Who, we were on the bed, on top of the sheets. Dude, even whenever you're under the sheets, you're still on the bed. You're not Fair in enough. the bed. All right, we were... We were you don't say I was in bed. If I'm having se- being in bed to me is having sex. Oh, all right, all right. Well, we went from being on the bed <laughs> to being in bed. But I have a this podcast. <laughs> My voice just did that for you, huh? No, no, it didn't have anything to do with what I was doing. It's just I don't know. She kissed my neck, and then all of a sudden we were doing the thing. Anyway, I was doing work. <laughs> but Did she whisper, other guy, no, in your ear? No. I, would, I might pay her to do that one day, by the way. <laughs> but afterward, afterward, we both discussed whether or not it was weird that we were having sex while you and I were having a conversation. That's and creepy, dude. I know, I know. And more, But here's the, like... It started rather suddenly, and then and then it was like I wasn't going to interrupt it to go hit balls. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I get up, this may magically disappear. Well, I mean, not that, but I was just like, it's like it's I like wouldn't rainbow get up to sex. take a phone call. Yeah, well, I mean, like if, like you, you, if just, you felt like if you went looking for it, you'd never find the pot of gold. Yeah. But if you just ignore it, you can enjoy the whole thing. Yes, yes, exactly. So anyway, so I didn't hit pause. And the other thing that I. The other thing that I was warring with myself about was, would I take it as a compliment or an insult if she laughed? <laughs> oh. Would it be yeah. that I was so funny that I overcame the sexy, or would it be that I was not sexy enough to overcome the funny? And either way, I wasn't sure it would be. She didn't. It's for what I, amounts, I can't think of. I can't think of a single podcast <clears throat> I could have sex while <laughs> while it was going on. Because I think a podcast is way more intimate than like a TV show or a radio show. I don't get me wrong. I don't think either one of us heard that last half of that edit. Oh no, that's that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. But what I'm saying is, I it, a podcast makes you feel like the dude's in the room with you <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. So I could 
I can't. There's no pod. <laughs> I, there's not a podcast I could have sex while it was on. It was a little strange. <laughs> it's like the. It's like the anti R Kelly. It's always not trapped in the closet. What? No, you can get what? booty to R Kelly song. <laughs> um, I don't know. I used to could, and then it became very obvious what R Kelly liked to do. And now I don't want to involve my booty getting with R Kelly's booty getting. I've never thought of it. What, that he likes to pee on little girls? Well, I'm having sex. I've never thought of it. <laughs> I would hope not. That's why I don't want to play an R. Kelly song. Like, I'd be halfway through Chocolate Factory and all of a sudden be like, oh, yeah, that dude. If you got time to girls. think about some what some dude did during sex, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm saying if I got an R. Kelly song on, I ain't thinking. you just thinking. I'm thinking I'm getting my groove. nothing wrong. Exactly. With a little bump and grind. Yeah. Anyway, uh, normally I got like a whole soundtrack and stuff. Like I put on music especially for the occasion. But it was just one of those spur of the moment things. Anyway, I don't consider wanna... yourself an aphrodisiac. <laughs> I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> oh, God bless. <sighs> What else we got to talk about? That's a good question. Um, Having to record that really got on my tits, by the way. Why? I'm missing part of the football game. Ninja, you got a master DVR. We shouldn't miss shit. I didn't DVR. Why not? Call your old little lady. Tell her to DVR it starting now. Be like, hey, will you press record, honey bun? I mean, not honey bun. <laughs> and this is other guy. You already got it living at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I he just am moved your, right on in. I am your other uh, your other adopted child. Son number one really loves the Spider Man song, the classic Spider Man. Spider Man, gotcha. Yeah, does whatever a spider can. This is the yeah. next line of that song. If you didn't know, okay, he loves that song. He does not really like the Spider Man cartoon shows that much, though. Uh, let me. Uh, I'm going to interrupt this for a second okay. for a quick story. Uh, so turns out my wife was one of my high school English teachers, right? And she would make us read a book and then we would have to, your wife was one of your high school, my English? wife's mom. Oh, okay. Was one of my high school, high school English, English, English teachers. teachers. All right. So she would make us, we'd have to take a plot of a book and kind of do a summary of it to music and, and your group would have to get up and freaking do the music and sing in front of the whole class. Okay. Uh, my favorite one that I ever saw was somebody took. Fahrenheit, but did it to the Spider Man theme song. Fahrenheit 451? Yeah. Okay. So instead of Spider Man, it was Fire Man, Fire Man, Burning Books. You know, like, Wherever he can. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's it was, funny. it made, I, I chuckled a lot whenever they did that. The really, really hungry. That's what you remember about Fahrenheit 451? Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> nice. That's all I remember about that class. Nice. Um, he loves this song. He doesn't like Spider-Man the cartoon show so much, though. He really likes Batman, but he sings a song about Batman. So Batman, Batman does whatever a bat can do. And he <laughs> does he about, really? <laughs> no. Yeah, he does it about a lot of things, actually. So the other day, he's having an argument with me about dad Batman. Dad man. Yeah. Dad man. Does whatever a dad can do. He uh, He's having an argument with me about Batman because he says Batman can fly. And I'm like, baby, Batman can't fly. He floats because he's got the cape. The cape, like, he can glide. Batman doesn't fly. He's like, a bat can fly, Batman can fly. Like, it's math. Like, it's just simple. <laughs> it's an equation. Well, what do you consider? Gl- gl- so, gliding's flight, man. Uh, Well, no. That's not... Flight is autonomous. Flight is a continuous, uh, self-powered... Uh, uh, Who has the first flight? The Wright brothers. How long was it? Yeah, I don't know. It was like thirty seconds or something like that. But um, but it was th- that airplane flew of its own power, though, is what I'm saying. Batman never flies of his own power. He's either got a jetpack or he's got a glider that he jumps off of a building and then uses the wind to glide down with. A bird can fly. Superman can fly. That motherfucker can fly. That wouldn't you now? You're sidetracking me into comic book territory. I would I just made the comic books as a humorous anecdote about my child to intro this week's if you could. If you could incorporate any one animal characteristic oh, yeah, really into the human species. Everybody would have it. Not oh, you. damn it. Everybody would Donkeys have it. Donkey's out. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, uh, you could be pretty, you could be pretty broad. Okay, so 
We could all we could all breathe underwater. We could all have tails. We could all have dogs noses. And I mean not physically, but we could have super olfactory senses. We could fly. We could have muff fucking wings and fly like okay. angels. I, I I can pick any attribute from any animal. As long as it's a real animal. You can't we can't have horns. <laughs> Like well, unicorn I mean, horns, what I really... Yeah, no, you can't have a unicorn horn. You okay. could have... We could have fucking cow horns. All right. Be hard would you, to justify if you had cow, evolutionarily, if you had, but who if gives you had, a shit? If you had cow horns, would you use it as a hat rack? Or like, you could hang up your coat? like the, On yourself? Why would you hang up your coat on yourself? I don't know. I just don't trust coatmen. <laughs> Why not just leave the coat on? I feel like whenever I go someplace and they have like a, a coat closet and they take my coat off, I always feel like they're going to like, I don't know, slip some kind of government chip in it that somebody stole and they're trying to get away. So, so they, they just put you. it in my coat and then I get trapped in a fucking like See government. See too many Will Smith movies. Yeah, that's what I always feel like it's going to like. Somebody's going to slip something in my stuff. Uh, here's my deal with the horns, though. I feel like if the human species adopted horns, like if we voted, <laughs> we were like, the scientists say we get one. <laughs> what do you guys want? And we picked horns, like like fucking steer horns. I would think that it would it would be it would very quickly develop into a status symbol and a sexual attractant. So like, I don't think you'd hang anything on them. I think we would. I think we would like. I would because I'm just kind of no. I would be. I would be a fucking cocky. You'd be like, I don't need to show off my fucking yeah. horns. Yeah. If you want to, if them. you want to see them, yeah. You know, look me up. Yeah. You don't know me or my fucking horns. Yeah. No, I wouldn't pick horns. Anyway, no, I didn't think so. Man, that's tough. I would like everybody to have whatever goo it is that's in a firefly on them. Uh, you would like people to be bioluminescent. photoluminescent, bioluminescent. Yeah, I would like people to be bioluminescent. Uh, would you want it in like a pattern, like the fucking Navi from Avatar, like uh, where no, it's I like don't, up and down their body uh, or something? I don't know. I'm just saying, like your light, you'd never need. Like if we, like if our hand could glow, yeah. like if we could turn on our hand, like ET. Yeah. Fucking light up the room, fumble. You'd never. Nobody would waste their fucking money on those little things for your keychain, right? <laughs> or or have to download an app. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? What if I'm looking for my phone? That app doesn't help me. It's dark. I can't find it. But if I glowed. Think how much money photographers would save. They wouldn't need the, like the little separate shutter with like the flash box. Like just like here's the camera. They'd hold up their right hands. Man, it'd be just cool. Like dance shows would be crazy cool then. Like these people are glowing and dancing. That would be pretty impressive. I would like a prehensile tail. Like a... It's just fucking creepy. That gets that gives me the willies. If everybody had one, it would not be creepy. Yeah. It would be sexy. No, what? <laughs> if everybody had one, you would have no problem with it. In a generation, nobody would mind. And don't get me wrong, I'm not one of these furries or anything. I don't have a. I don't. I don't like to look at like manga porn or something. I'm just saying. I think they'd be super fucking useful, especially in a digital age where we're working with multiple screens and multiple input devices at all times. If if we all had another useful appendage for holding, carrying, striking, touching, swiping, whatever you do with a fucking monkey tail. I think it'd be awesome. N- no, that's <laughs> what? That's a whole, that is fucking that's fucking creepy cuz all I'm thinking about is I'm sitting here typing away or doing what the fuck ever I'm doing, right? And somebody just takes their tail and like rubs it down my fucking neck or something. No, there's still personal space bubble. You wouldn't touch each other with the tail unless really? you Really? Do I walk around tapping you on the shoulder now? If I had a tail, I would. If if you had a tail, yes, if everybody had a tail, there would be rules for interaction just like there are rules for interaction like now. You, personal space bubbles don't go away because we develop prehensile look, tails. Look, look, you can justify your pick all you want to. <laughs> it doesn't make it less dumb. I'll defend the prehensile tail. I think it's a brilliant choice for a future genetic Over adaptation. glowing? Yeah, bioluminescence, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think, yes, you're right. There's lots of practical applications. But I think on the whole, tails are cooler. Get you some tail. That's that's the vote from one guy. Not the other. <laughs> I think that's going to be my tagline this week. One In which one guy gets some tail <laughs> and the other guy. <laughs> Ooh, I did get tail. I told a sex story, too. Look at that. <laughs> 
All right, then. You ready to wrap this thing up? No, no. I think uh, I'm you just changing kinda... bioluminescence. Or are you just still disgusted at my prehensile tail? <laughs> no, like I'm, st- I'm, I think bioluminescence. I think bioluminescence is cool, but I also think there's probably cooler things out there than bioluminescence. I mean, well, okay, like ah, it'd be pretty cool if we could uh, like regrow body parts, like fucking like the salamanders or a worm. Or no, something, right? no, 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 that's a bad idea too. Why? They're working on that shit for real. I think anyway. For, think about these like uh, combat uh, veterans and stuff. Like you get these guys that are like they lose a leg in an I you know a improvised explosive device or whatever an right. ID. Come home and we could just fucking put some goo on there and it'd regrow. Yeah, but then our enemy could do that too. I don't oh, want to have yeah. to keep fighting the same guy, man. I think I think it's been made very clear by Hollywood. We're racing towards a future of robot warfare. All right, and then then the robots decide that we, they should just fight us instead of each other, and then we're all done. That's the way this thing works. That's what happens in the future. You've seen movies. <laughs> a few. Now, I'm trying to think of what would be a cool vocal. What, what? Like if we could do sonar like whales? Or if we could just do, yeah. So are, are we make those, uh, the ape, the howler monkey noises? No, what Football if, games would be way more annoying. What if, what if we had, what if we had uh, like some of the monkeys the do? air sacs. Gigantic air sacs that, that, are, that are largely about, that are largely about long distance communication and and uh, and mating rituals, <laughs> you know, like they only flare up during mating season or when we need to call phone home, <laughs> and we could call mom. <laughs> but you could also get a girlfriend that way. <laughs> <laughs> same same noise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Who shows up first? You're okay with? Yeah, just depends on which way you aim it. <laughs> oh my god! All right, uh, let's go get some food and then go watch some football. All right. Uh, have you done your like your fantasy? We can talk about that next week. Yeah, yeah I've done I've done my fantasy stuff. I didn't want to. <laughs> and you don't want to do this podcast. We've been doing it eighteen weeks in a Why row. Why do I keep doing things I don't want to do? I'm even. I'm even manipulating myself. <laughs> I have to subconsciously prod myself to do the things that I don't like, but I really do like doing them. So you have to you have to play a shell game. With yeah, with, with with my own mind. <laughs> it's what I do when I'm not thinking about anything. <laughs> Until next week, <laughs> I'm one guy, comma, and I'm the other. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been the podcast. Oh God. Pondering 
shall I ever learn from this constant fight? Stuck at the crossroads of wrong and right. We got to come up with a, a, a bit for lists. Why? I don't know. I like lists. <laughs> I think you should come up with a bit for lists. Yeah, well, we're not getting lists. <laughs>